guys, I hope everyone's having a wonderful day so far. As you guys can tell, I'm no longer in my usual filming space. Mm -mm -mm. I now have my very own filming studio space and honestly, I've been waiting for this day for a very long time and now that it's here, I'm just shook. I am excited. I'm just, I'm going crazy. I mean, look at this. I got a backdrop. I got a clothing rail. I have a table. I even have a plant. A plant. Your girl has evolved. Anyway, now that is out of the way, it's now time to move on to this video. So for today's video, if you haven't already read the title, it's a styling trend you hate. I've seen a bunch of different people do videos like this and I love them. I mean, I'm the kind of person who used to really hate certain trends and just trends in general, but now I'm just open and free and loving to all kinds of trends. I feel like I can always find a way to make a trend work for me, even if at first glance I'm just like, ugh. You're ugly. So for this video, I basically asked you guys on Instagram to send me your most hated trends. And what I'm gonna do is basically attempt to style them and make them look nice for you guys. So hopefully you guys leave this video with some inspiration. Maybe you wanted to try out some of these trends or maybe just still hating the trends, but still getting some inspiration. So the first trend that everyone absolutely hated was snake skin and leopard print. Now I do have quite a few pieces in like snake skin, leopard print, and even just like other animal prints like zebra and tiger, etc., etc. But for today, I decided to focus on the two that you guys mentioned the most. And honestly, when it comes to this trend, I kind of get you. I think when it came to snake skin, I never really had the urge to buy snake skin. I guess it just never really called out to me. I didn't hate it. I was just like, mm, yeah, basic. You know what I mean? But when it came to leopard print, I was just like, oh, ho, ho, honey. No, no, no. For some reason, I just thought it was so cheap and tacky and gross. I just really, really hated it. I don't know why, because now I absolutely love it. But at the time, I was like, girl, keep that nasty stuff away from me. So my favorite way to incorporate like a color or a print or a pattern into my wardrobe is definitely by styling it in a polo neck. Cause I feel like when it comes to a polo neck, you can wear it on its own, you can layer it, you can show off more of the design or less of the design depending on how you want to style it. Like if you style it with a t-shirt like I'm doing right now, you see like a little bit on the neck and a little bit on the arms. But if you were to style this with like a long sleeve shirt, you would just see a little bit on the neck. Or if you style it in the way that I did right here with a vest, you see a little bit more of the print. Like you, you see what I'm trying to say when it comes to a polo neck, there's a so many different ways you can style it. Like whether you want to make your style very feminine or like kind of edgy. There's so many different genres, I guess, of like fashion. And you can really hit all of them with a polo neck. So definitely a polo neck is a must. But anyway, the way that I decide to style it is with a black vest. That way you see a little bit of the leopard print, but not too much. I decided to keep it pretty classic with the outfit. Like I literally just went for black because I feel like black with a print is just perfection. And also if you are scared of doing like a print or a bright color, it's a great way to go. Just pair with black all the damn time. It's just easy, breezy, beautiful. For my second look, I decided to show you a retro 70s inspired look that I did with this. So this time I decided to go a little bit more bold with the print, so I went for a shirt. But because I didn't want to overdo it and I wanted to balance out the look, I decided to tie it at the waist. That way you see like a whole chunk of print, but it's not taking up the entire outfit. So to balance out the print, I decided to have like one color running through the outfit. And I decided to do that with my shoes and my accessories. I kept them all white. So I've got the lovely white glasses, white handbag and white shoes. I feel like having that sort of draws the attention away from the leopard print so it's not too much about this. It's like a little bit of everything. Everything coming together in harmony to work together and become friends. And that's basically the description for outfit number two. So now I've got a little bit of snake print. Now, like I said before, snake print's one of those things that I never really tend to go for, not because I hate it or anything. It's just, it was always just a bit basic and I wasn't really into it until I saw these trousers. Another great way to incorporate something like this into your wardrobe would be to get it in an item of clothing that you find very classic and very comfortable for you. Like I said, with the other two pieces, they were a polo neck, which I absolutely love. They go with everything. And it was a shirt, which is super basic. So for this print, I have it in a really classic pair of high-waisted wide leg trousers. I feel like, especially when it comes to prints, kind of like repeating what I said earlier. It's really good to have these like trendy pieces in staple silhouettes that you have in your wardrobe. <laughs> I sound so bougie today. But anyway, on to how I style this. Again, I decided to go for a very classic way of styling this, which was all black. I mean, you can never go wrong with all black. It looks good all the time with any print, with any other colors. It's just the safest, most best bet. Like if you're struggling, go with black. But yeah, those are a few ways I style the snakeskin and leopard print trend. If you guys want a whole video on like, animal prints, let me know because I got a lot of animal prints. Anyway, the next trend that I have for you guys is neon. I'm wearing it right now and honestly, I love it. And not gonna lie, this is one of those trends, this is one of those trends that when I first saw it popping up everywhere, I was just like, 
girl, no. Like you look like a highlighter or a traffic cone or some sort of reflective road sign. Just no, I'm not about that life. But then I got this shirt. Now I know you're looking at it and you're thinking, girl, that's not neon, but it is a very, very, very bright green. I mean, Look at this, like Shrek ain't got nothing on this, okay? So I picked this up a few months ago from Modernisa and I kind of picked it up like on a whim. I was like, you know what? I don't have anything else like this. Why not? Let's let's try it and let's style it, okay? Like I know I hate the neon, but maybe I like this kind of brightish green and boy, oh boy, I did not know what I was getting myself into. Like honestly, I just found a brand new love for like bright colors and neons. I was just like a whole new person. So tip for you guys, if you don't like neon or if you do like neon, but you're not entirely sure how to do it, maybe go for a color that is very close to that neon shade because then you will automatically be able to do that neon. Trust me, you'll be riding that color wave. So yeah, this is kind of like my gateway drug into neon clothing. Now, although I absolutely love this shirt and I'm digging the neon and the bright colors, I'm still like a little apprehensive, a little afraid because I'm just so used to wearing black like day in, day out throughout like my entire life. Actually, you know what? At one point I used to love color and then life hit me and literally sucked the color and life out of my life. And from then on I decided to only dress like an emo. But anyway, because I am still a little afraid of super bright colors, I decided to accessorize to the max. I feel like accessorizing over the top kind of balances out all of this and makes it a bit more palatable for me. So I literally just went ham with the accessories. I've got my beret, I got my glasses, I've got like a bunch of my necklaces on, a harness, a waist chain, a waist chain, a belt chain, one of them trouser chains, you know what I mean? I literally went all out and then paired it with some really nice classic high-waisted trousers. Now I know I said earlier when it comes to bright colors or prints or something you're not entirely sure how to style to go for it in like a very classic shape or like a classic silhouette that's like classic to you. God, how many times are we gonna say classic? And as you can tell, this is not like a classic blouse. It's got like a little bit of ruching, a little bit of high neck, and it's got like some little floofing on the sleeves. Definitely um, real fashion terms over here. So you know, it ain't classic, but what is classic is the trousers that I paired it with. That way I still feel comfortable and I feel like the outfit is still balanced out. It's still got me there. And also, you know, pairing something a bit more funky with something more classic always just like, it always just balances it out, okay? It does what it needs to do. My second way to style neon is in the way that I'm doing today. It is my absolute favorite way and that is layering a t-shirt over a polo neck, literally. What a classic bravo, just bravo. Like literally, this is one of my favorite ways to style absolutely anything. So of course, when it comes to the neon trend, this is what I do. It's a great way to sort of show off the neon, but not too much neon, but also, you know, incorporate it with something you love and like you wear all the time. So for me, it's like my black pink t-shirt, but for you, it could be any t-shirt. If you got a favorite tee, Wear it with your favorite tea, and I guarantee you, you will love it. And also what makes this little combination work even better is the fact that on my actual t-shirt right here, oh my God, on my actual t-shirt, you can actually see that I do have like a little bit of neon on it. So I feel like those two just sort of bounce off each other and they do like a nice little tango together. So the next one that I have is the infamous bucket hat. Now I have like a strange, I have a strange relationship with bucket hats. When they first had their comeback, I absolutely hated it. I wanted nothing to do with them whatsoever. They literally look like a bin that has been tipped upside down on your head. Like, what is this? You look stupid, okay? And that was up until I saw some of my fave styling it, like Hudan Yusuf, and oh my lord, have mercy. When I saw her styling it in like her various ways, I was just shook, okay? I was shook to the core. And she rocked it so well, I immediately went and bought two bucket hats. I bought this one, and I also bought like a nude fluffy one, which I'm not actually styling in today's video, but maybe in another one. Anyway, so I got my little bucket hat from a Yes Style. It is just a simple, plain black one. Another great way if you wanna like play about with like a trend, like an accessory like this, maybe go for it in a black or like a color that you wear a lot. So if you wear a lot of nude, maybe a nude. If you wear a lot of black like me, then maybe go for a black. So for me, when it comes to bucket hats, I definitely like styling them in more of a casual way. So, you know, with trousers, a bum bag, maybe like t-shirt. That's like my style and vibe when it comes to bucket hats. But one of my looks, I actually tried styling it with some heels, not like some massive stilettos, but with like a little strappy heel. And at first I was unsure, but the more I wore it, the more I kind of felt it. I was like, damn, like if I went on holiday, this this would be a look. This is like my holiday vibe. If you're struggling to make it suit like your face shape or your head shape or anything, I think definitely have a play about with the hat. Like with me, I like to wear it slightly further back on my head. So you see more of my face. Cause I, if I have it like straight up on my head, I literally look like a flower pot. Do you guys remember Fifi 
see the flower pot, I look like I belong on that show. Also with some bucket hats, they have a little bit of metal wire going through the edge so you can actually bend the hat so it suits you. So if you want to flop on the front, it'll flop. If you want to lift up at the front and have like a little wave on the side, you can, like you can adjust it. Unfortunately, this hat doesn't have that, but the other nude fluffy one that I mentioned, that one has a little bit of metal wiring in it. So when I wear it, I can literally just like, twist, okay, maybe not like that. I can like twist and turn it however I want to make it look fabulous. I know this way isn't the best way to sell you like the bucket hat, but believe me, you can style it a bunch of different ways and it's fabulous. So next up we have the bum bag, the most fashionable item of all the items. So I literally just have one bum bag. This is my Eastpac bum bag that I got from Amazon, I believe. It's got two zips, one big one, one little one. Actually it's got three and it has a little secret one on the back. And honestly, best thing ever literally when these sort of came back in fashion i genuinely thought they were ugly but the more i saw it the more i was just like okay you're kind of growing on me you know what let's let's try it and it's sublime you can fit so much in this it's unbelievable like this is jam-packed i should probably do like a what's in my bag but what's in my bum bag because this is like my everyday bag now. Like it's so practical, I literally ignore everything else and I wear it. Like I wore this on Eid with my outfit. I literally had it like this as a handbag. I literally couldn't be bothered switching it with another bag. Like it fits everything. It's so perfect, it's so practical. So like physically, yeah, it's a little bit ugly, but it's so practical and it's so comfortable to wear that I just, I love it, okay? I love it. Anyway, enough of my blabbering. When it comes to styling bum bags, again, it is super easy. Just like with the hat, you can chuck it over everything. One of my favorite ways, again, is to style this in a very like casual kind of way. You know, t-shirts, comfy trousers, comfy clothing. That's like the vibe. I haven't tried styling it with a more feminine outfit just quite yet, minus the times on ease where I used it as a handbag. But at one point I will, but for now I feel like for me and especially for other people if you're trying to get into the bum bag trend or if you really hate the bum bag trend but are trying to find a way to maybe kind of like it then this is a good way to go because it's a very casual item so a casual style is the easiest way to sort of slide it into your wardrobe. Next up on our list of things everyone hates we have some good old flared jeans. Mm -mm -mm. Now flared jeans are one of those things that I absolutely love but unfortunately don't have. The trousers right here that I have are kind of like wide leg trousers with like a tiny bit of a flare, but sadly not like a proper like boot cut flare type of jeans. So I just DIY'd them for the purposes of this video and just safety pin them like by the leg. So please forgive me for them not being authentic, but unfortunately I can't find the perfect pair that fits me. So I just have to do like a little bit of a DIY action for now. So flared jeans remind me so much of the 2000s. Like, oh my goodness. Like I was on that flared jean, boot cut jean hype. I had a pair that had butterfly embroidery. I had another pair that literally had like these glitter blue flames that went up the legs. They were wild and I love them and I really wish I could fit into them now because they were just such a vibe and such a look, just oof. But anyway, when it comes to these types of jeans, I like styling them in one of two ways. The first style is in a very 2000s kind of style. You got the t-shirt tucked into the jeans. We got some chunky trainers, got a little bit of a hat going on. Like literally this whole outfit reminds me of like me when I was younger. Minus the bucket hat, cause I hated bucket hats back then. I'd probably just wear like a cap or something, but it's, ooh sweet sweet memories and the other way i generally tend to style these types of jeans is in like a very 70s retro kind of vibe you saw this outfit earlier with the little pop of white and leopard print i feel like all these elements together with the flared jeans just work so so well but yeah those are two ways i really enjoy styling flared jeans i know back in the day i'd wear flared jeans with like a cute little cardigan or like a pink t-shirt that sort of barbie kind of style and although i haven't tried that style recently i think i definitely go for it but yeah, there is just so much you can do with trousers like these. But yeah, guys, that is this whole video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and hopefully it was helpful for you guys. Now that I have like this new filming space, I am feeling so motivated to film like a villain video. So if you have any ideas or things you want me to do, let me know. I can always do like a full lookbook on some of these items if you would like me to do so. Remember, you guys can follow me on social media at like for Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff. But I literally just use Instagram. I'm a basic bitch, okay? I'm a basic bitch. Also, if you guys are into podcasts, me and my best friends have a podcast where we talk about literally everything uncut real raw I mean we literally in the last episode spoke about hentai for quite a while so we talk about everything so if you're interested we're called the neighborhood trash gang on Spotify SoundCloud iTunes literally you can find us anywhere but yeah guys that brings us to the end of the video I hope you guys enjoyed it hopefully it's helped you guys and I will see you <coughs> I'm losing my voice now and I'll see you in the next one bye